What's up everyone, this is Jacob here and in today's video I'm going to be talking about kind of the process of taking your trading strategy, specifically an algo trading strategy, into real time, you know, with real money uh, in a real time environment. So I wanted to talk about three main tips and, and hurdles you're going to come across because you might build a what you think is a profitable algorithmic trading strategy but when you bring it to real time, you might get different results. It might be worse, it might be better. And the reason that could be why is because your code uh, actually doesn't reflect an active or, or a true real environment. The first, you know, say you have a strategy, you built it, right? And actually at the end of this video, I'm gonna be showing you um, the previous strategy we built in my last YouTube video with the cryptocurrency trading bot. I'm gonna show you how to take that and put it in real time uh, with the Ninja Trader platform. So that'll, that'll be at the end of the video. Uh, but for now, I wanted to talk about, you know, the, the main things to think about and, and tips when you're bringing your strategy into real time. The first thing you need to incorporate or to ensure that your back-tested strategy is the same as the real-time strategy is specifically how you handle your uh, time frame. all right? When you're building a strategy, right, um, you know, when it when it's going to make a trade, it can make a trade based on different factors, right? Is the candle closing, right? Or is it tick based, right? In the stock market or any exchange, you have a data feed, right? And there's ticks and a tick represents basically um, an order on the exchange or brokerage, right? So in a one say in a one minute range in a one minute time frame people are trading they're buying and selling buying and selling you know there might be um you know a hundred ticks a thousand ticks however much how much however much people are trading in that one minute time frame there could be more or less ticks right so say you have a strategy that's buying and selling right based on one minute candles right so you're you're buying and selling it and you back tested it and it's profitable, but you put it into real time. And when it goes to buy on that one minute candle for that, basically for that 60 seconds, your strategy doesn't know what's going on in that one minute time frame until the candle closes, right? So your strategy could buy, uh, you know, say buy an asset and within that 60 minutes, you know, it's bought, it's entered, it doesn't know what's going on. And then it just has a massive drop and once the candle closes, it takes a massive loss because it didn't know what was happening uh, within that one range, within that one minute range candle. So what you need to account for and code for is, um, you know, intrabar granularity, right? You need to know, okay, you might be using five minute or 10 minute candlesticks or, you know, whatever system, whatever your system is, but you need to also know what's going on in, in intra bar in between that five minute or 10 minute candle and also react okay so if your trading system is completely on when a when a when a candle closes buying and selling it will actually transfer really well into real time and you shouldn't have too many issues right because that's very um you know because it's only interacting when a when the candle closes you know say one minute or five minute candle closes it's easy to transfer. It's easy to transfer in real time because there's no, there's no, um, intro, like I said, intra bar granularity. Now, if your trading system, uh, say has a, a take profit or a stop loss, right? Set values. And it doesn't have the intra bar granularity. There's an issue because there might be times when your trading system should have taken profit, but it only knows when the candle is closed. So maybe the candle, maybe the price action, you know, wicks up, it hits your, your target, but then it drops down and your system doesn't do that sell order until the bar is closed, right? So then it's going to sell, it's either going to get less profit or not even fill and maybe reverse. So you need to understand when you're building your trading system, how are you taking your profit and stop loss? Um, and, and, you know, really mixing that with intra bar granularity. Okay. The best system to do is basically, you know, build, build a trading bot that focuses on bar close, right? It enters and exits when the candle has closed, but it's also aware that of the intra bar granularity of that range, say it's a one minute, like I said, it's also aware of the price movement and will take a stop loss and profit also based on that, um, that intra bar movement 
That way you can ensure that your trading system is gonna lock in that profit or take that loss and not have issues of not being filled. So that's probably the biggest, biggest issue I came across when I moved my strategy into real time was I did not account for that intra-bar granularity and thus there was times where it should have taken a stop loss or a profit and it just either didn't get filled or didn't even submit the order because once the bar closed, it wasn't near that price range anymore, okay? So that's a really, really big thing to think about uh, when you're um, building your system. Uh, you also need to, uh, the other big issue is, is, you know, trying to historically fill orders, right? It's, it's, it's quite a complex process because when you're back testing your software and, um, you know, say you go to submit an order, say, you know, you want to buy uh, five shares of stock, you know, the order in which the bar comes, right? And in, 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 in the order where, you know, the ticks build that bar is very important because you could submit, say, a buy order, right? And the order in which the candle is built does not, you know, by the time you, you submit that order, it might not actually get filled because the order is not what you're thinking it was, right? And then when you go into real time, you know, it's never, or it's making wrong trades or, you know, not accurately back-tested trades. And now you're all of a sudden like, why isn't it filling or, why is it doesn't, you know, when I back tested this, it was filling, but now it's not. So you need to account for uh, the order in which the ticks are building that candlestick. And, you know, having that right order is important because, you know, when you want to submit uh, an order, you know, in, 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 in history with, you know, a back test, um, you know, that can, that can uh, change your results drastically if an order should be filled or not, okay? So to summarize that, basically you need a system of understanding how the candlestick's built and, and the order in which it's built. That way you can accurately um, you know, fill your orders when you back test. And NinjaTrader, which is the platform I use, has a feature called Tick Replay and it actually, um, you know, for each candlestick, say they're one minute or five minute candlesticks, it also takes the time to build those candlesticks in the correct order with the correct tick sizes, right? Um, and also, you know, uses um, a great historical fill processing, which basically means if you backtest a strategy and you go to submit an order, it looks at the volume and compares it and says, all right, your order uh, potentially would have been filled because there was enough volume. Uh, whereas say you built your own system from scratch and you're not taking account for that, when you back test, uh, you know, it might show that the order failed and you made a bunch of money, but in reality, the volume was so low or that the, the ticks didn't come in that correct order, um, you know, your, your order potentially may have not filled, right? And then when you go to move it to real time, you're not getting the accurate trades that you wanted it to. So to summarize, when you're building, when you're back testing and you wanna move it to real time, you need to understand volume, how much volume each candle has and compare that with your order size to make sure that it would actually fill. And two, the order in which the candle was built with the appropriate tick sizes as well, okay? So those are, are two uh, really big things um, when it comes to accurately back testing and then moving it to real time and getting the same results. Last thing um, is, you know, I personally do this, a lot of people do this, it's a, it's a good practice, but um, you, you might move it to real time but use a SIM account and not use real money yet because you wanna test it out. So this is a really good process because you can you have, you have three steps. You can back test with historical data. You can run in real time with a sim, and then you know the last step is run in real time with real money. So this middle process of running um, your trading bot strategy in real time with a sim account is 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 great. It's a great start, and um, it will tell you if your back tested strategy is somewhat accurate. But with that being said, you know the sim account uses, um, you know, obviously simulation filling, simulation order filling, right? It's not real. Um, you know, it, it tries to look at the, the current volume that's coming in and saying, all right, you probably would have been filled. And it's, it's pretty accurate. It's, it's probably, you know, more than between, you know, probably 70 to 90% accurate that you would actually be filled. Um, but you have to understand that like, it's still not the real thing. You know, you will get the best results running your strategy in real time. And, you know, just run it with, uh, when you want to move it to real time, just, you know, start with a low quantity, low position sizes. That way you can um, see how it's interacting, see if your backtest and your SIM account 
uh, back tests are somewhat accurate and you know increase the position size as you get more confident it takes a long time to get confident with your strategy because you have to run it for weeks and months in real time to see how it's actually doing okay so to summarize that basically uh definitely run it in real time with your sim account first with paper trading but also know that it's you know still not the real thing all right and the big question will be, all right, is your SIM account mimicking your real account? If you've coded your strategy well and you've taken into account, um, you know, volume, how the ticks are built, intra-bar granularity, then your back test should be very similar to your real-time results, which is great because then you can improve your strategy faster and quicker without having to wait till market open to the next day. So anyways, those are my basically my big three tips on taking your trading bot strategy and moving it into real time and making sure that process is accurate and you're getting the same results, okay? So um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was taking one of the strategies that we built on our, my YouTube channel. So my previous, or my, not my previous video, but the video before that where I build the crypto, uh, cryptocurrency trading bot with you guys. If you wanted to take that strategy and move it into real time, this is basically how you do it. So in that episode, uh, in that YouTube video, we coded the strategy, we ran it in a back test um, with a, you know, a simulation account. If you wanted to take that into real time, basically what you would do is you would have to connect uh, to a real time data feed such as uh, you know Coinbase, uh, Binance, whatever it may be. And basically once, you, once you're there, uh, connected in the NinjaTrader platform, all you would do is go to the strategies tab, right click, hit new strategy, uh, select that cryptocurrency trading bot strategy um, and hit enable. Uh, so, you know, check the check the enable box. Uh, it should show up green in NinjaTrader. And then basically you would open up a new chart um, in the NinjaTrader platform, you know, select Bitcoin, BTC, USD, and, um, you know, it should connect to the data feed and, and go live and start trading. So that's, you know, uh, how you do it technically, but make sure um, the stuff that I talked about earlier like I said, intra-bar granularity, understanding how the candles are built with the ticks in the correct order, um, historical fill process processing, so making sure that the volume matches up uh, in your back tests uh, to your, your position size. And, and the last thing is the, uh, the tick order, how the candles are being built and in which order is really important uh, to getting filled, right, as well. So. Um, I know this is a lot for you guys. I hope um, I got you know a lot of comments on on you know taking our strategies and moving into real time. Um, like I said, I always always recommend uh, running your strategy with a paper trading uh, slash sim account for probably about a week and really understanding how it's working, iron out those bugs and and, and seeing by the end of the week if it's good enough. If not, you know run it for another week with your sim account. Um, until you know you're really confident and then start with a low size when you move it into real time so that's how I would uh, take a strategy that I back tested and built and put it into real time so anyways that's the video guys I hope you enjoyed this video and found value um, leave a comment below on what you want to see next um, as far uh, as for my next video I will be coding a stock market trading bot in Python okay you guys have been you know, berating me with comments on build this in Python, build this in Python. Can you do this in Python? So the next video series, we're going to be building a stock market trading bot in Python. I'm going to have to learn Python, but I'll figure it out. I'll find a way and uh, I'm going to do a series on it. So um, anyways, that's all guys. I hope you found value in this video and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.